Dios. Hello and welcome to another episode of During the summer a few months ago, uh, already, I had the pleasure to be with my son Pierre Massé, who was visiting us, uh, taking a break from his uh, PhD uh, at an institute called uh, IRCAM in, in Paris. Uh, we talked about music, which is also important to me. Uh, I cannot imagine living with music and, and listening to music and all the different kinds and styles uh, and moods. It would be quite a challenge to uh, to choose uh, my top five albums if I had to be stranded on an island. At home, I'm surrounded uh, with musicians in the family, uh, and uh, it might explain why Pierre chose to explore that field with a scientific tone and angle to it. So on that note, uh, let's go fortissimo and back in time. Hello, Pierre. Hello. Nice to have you at home with us in Toronto. It's nice to be in Toronto. Yes, indeed. Quite a musical city, by the way. Oh, yeah. Right. I defend it every day. <laughs> um, you, um, as I was um, saying, you are at an institute called uh, l'IRCAM. Uh, can you tell us what l'IRCAM stands for, by the way, and then what it does? Yeah, so IRCAM stands for Institut de Recherche et Coordination Acoustique Musique. So in English, that gives the Institute for um, Research and Coordination between Acoustics and Music. Uh, it was founded in the 70s by a French avant-garde composer called Pierre Boulez, who uh, was really interested in uh, starting to use technical electronic aspects of music production for his avant-garde compositions, um, but that required still a lot more scientific research into how sound works um, in order to really bring his vision alive. So he developed this thing uh, with the government where it's uh, a sort of three-headed institute where composers, sound designers uh, come and have sort of carte blanche to explore all they want in in sort of very avant-garde uh, composition world. So why did you choose to pursue um, this um, field? Music came first, um, so I've been playing guitar since I've been, since I was eight. Oh, interesting. Um, and then through my studies, I got interested in physics, the science side of things. Uh, I ended up going to, do, to Waterloo to do an undergrad in, in theoretical physics. And after that, I started thinking about, okay, now I've gone, done a bunch of physics for a while, it'd be nice to come back and see what I can do using both that and the music. And that's how I ended up uh, finding acoustics, and more specifically, because acoustics is a very big, uh, very wide field, so more specifically musical acoustics, and now uh, room acoustics and signal processing. So this podcast is about uh, interfaces between humans and technology. I'm fascinated with this idea of us constantly creating new ways to interact with machines. Can you tell us about your idea of those interfaces and your physical, your favorite instrument? And other yeah, things? so I think the word instrument is important because the first interfaces we have in music um, before we even started talking about the word interface in music is we had instruments which are our number one uh, interface to the creation of sound and then obviously the creation of music. Um, so you kind of look at back at the history, first we were interested in how can we create different sounds and then we started sort of refining the actual interface part I guess in order to create music m more efficiently on these instruments that created sound. Um, so, yes, clearly the one I'm most familiar with is the guitar. Um, 
which belongs to a family of instruments uh, called the plucked string instruments, which are obviously known for being plucked. Um, other examples are obviously yes, everything that's in the guitar family, bass guitars, ukuleles, all those. So violins are not considered as plucked? No, so I'll, I'll talk about the differences. Um, there's, okay, well, this might be a good time to bring it up. There's basically two large families of how sound is initially created in instruments. And then there's two large families about how the pitch of the sound is controlled once you've created the sound. So a guitar, as I said, is uh, plucked, but that's based in the general family of impulsive uh, excitations. So anything that's like you have an initial in excitation, and then after that you don't interact, the sound has been created, and it's, it's there. Um, obviously the piano fits in this family. Uh, even all percussive instruments fit in this family because you just hit one thing and then you create the sound and then that's the sound has been created and then sustains for more or less but now the other family are continuous uh, continuous production of sound so that's all that's uh, uh, bowed strings so violins uh, cellos etc but also everything that's brass wind instruments everything where you have to yeah. continuously interact to create, to create sound. sound. Um, so those are the two main families of how the sound is created, and then you have two main families on how the pitch is controlled. So the guitar obviously is fretted, so it creates what we call a discrete set of sounds. I can only play discrete notes, right? I can't go between. I can't go between the two notes, which is obviously the opposite of what happens in a violin, where you you don't have any frets, so you can go continuously by sliding your fingers up. You, you can right. continuously slide. Uh, the piano is also like the guitar, it has discrete notes, you can't go between two. But for example, a uh, saxophone is continuous production, but it has discrete notes like the guitar. You can't play between two. Tell us about moving from one world to the other. Yeah. Is it seamless for you? Does it seem totally natural? Uh, is it an extension or is it a brand new world out there on the digital world? Tell me a bit more about the interfaces that you deal with. Yeah, I mean, I, I consider it personally an extension of the same world. Um, it's it's a more it's a very powerful and sort of wild west uh, expansion because um, I mean the guitar is relatively new, but I mean violins, all these instruments have been along for so long. But uh, the whole digital world has been around for maybe in popular access, maybe 20 years, 25, 30 years max. I consider it an extension because the first digital uh, controls we had were totally based off of real instruments. Uh, the, we made the move because... Which were, what, the things you like? Yeah, and synthesizers used keyboards because um, that was the most natural way. Even analog synthesizers used keyboards because that was the most uh, obvious way to control. The new synthesizers now, it's... There, the, there the are input, now, the input is digital. Is digital? Uh, everything. So there are 100% digital synthesizers okay. now. Yeah, where everything is just as soon as you hit the key, everything is just digital signals. But in terms of interfaces, yeah, we sort of we started off with sort of okay, mimicking what we had before, especially keyboards, and then we eventually started moving away and saying, well, you know what? Now, now that we're living in an electronic world, we don't need. Uh, we don't need necessarily to follow that. Um, you want to give us an example. So the first, the first example that sort of revolutionized the the world of electronic music, and which was not based on a, an existing instrument, more or less, uh, is the, was the MPC pads. So the the, the samplers that are based on a, a sort of four by four or eight by eight grid of pads. Uh, to each pad, you can assign a sample. Okay. And this is what revolutionized hip hop in the '80s was okay. being able to sample and create. And those pads go back or go back to the '80s. Those pads. So the first samplers, the first digital samplers, were created in the '80s, um, but they were not. It was not very uh, widely right. known. It was used by some hip hop producers and some electronic producers, but they really exploded in the '90s and 2000s. And now we use things that look like that, that are sort of uh, eight by eight pads. We use those to actually directly control our uh, our workstations on the computer. Right. Because it's, it's, we've found it's a sort of natural way to do things. We found that the grid is a really nice way to control uh, samples, like launching samples, for example. So I think that's going to stay. Um, what we're seeing now is more and more sort of different quirky ways of controlling things. 
Um, so this goes back to this, what I was saying, two ways to control things, a discrete manner, note by note, or sample by sample, which is what we were doing with keyboards and pads. Yeah. Now we're start, starting to see people uh, with some modern um, touch technologies, we can have continuous control. There are digital uh, ribbon controllers that sort of give you a continuous, sort of like a violin neck, yeah. uh, except the signal gets directly digitized, and then you can use that to control whatever you and want. Physically, it looks like a long. Yeah, physically, they usually look like long touch strips, okay. or uh, or yeah, like some sort of long uh, ribbon strip. And wow. but now people are starting to do also mixed ones where you have just like a, imagine like a large track pad right. uh, on which you can overlay different types of, um, of interfaces. So your basic one is that big track pad, but then you can give it different templates. Because it's all touch? Because it's all touch and it's so all mapped you, directly. So you can design your own touch. Exactly. Track. Because old controllers is basically you hit the button and it's like no on, okay, no off. All right, very okay. basic. Now with advances in materials technology, we can actually track, we can put uh, pressure, continuous pressure and XY center okay. sensors in the pads themselves. And we're starting to have uh, really deep levels of control that sort of mimic uh, in a physical instrument, you know, in a physical instrument is not just like note, you have a lot of control through the note, like I can bend it, yeah. control them continuously and in a very uh, sort of organic manner now oh. because it's like every little, Every little pressure difference your uh, finger makes on the pad can now be reflected in the data stream. So, do you see some trends coming out on the musical scene using these uh, technologies? What we're seeing more and more, what what all of this is helping is create, um, uh, give many more options for people like me who produce music, but also want to play it live. Uh, now with all these new controllers, you have way more options to actually control uh, an entire live show, uh, even if you're just one person. One more question. Um, machine learning. Um, so in your world, um, you do a lot of um, you do a lot of coding in what you do, and you open the hood and then go deep in uh, behind those digital interfaces yeah. and the language of music translated to the digital world inevitably takes us to you know, artificial intelligence and, and machine learning. Uh, what do you see happening in your world with that? Yeah, so there's, there are many, many different applications in the world of music for, for machine learning. Uh, one of the big ones right now is what Spotify and the streaming services are doing, which is what we call uh, music information retrieval, uh, which is all about analyzing a, a recorded piece and trying to extract uh, a lot of different information from it, from very basic stuff like the tempo, the key, etc., to uh, sort of more um, abstract things like the mood or the feeling of the track. And what um, does that do to me, the user? So that helps Spotify and these guys uh, run their, their recommendation engines pretty much. Yes. The more data they can automatically extract, uh, the more they can fine tune their, their recommendation engines, the more the more parameters they have to feed. But then uh, we have a lot of uh, of stuff going on in what people call creative AI. So that's uh, machine learning applied to the creative aspects, so the creation and production of music. Um, and there's some very interesting stuff going on there. Uh, often going through what we call agents, which are uh, algorithms that are uh, backed by some big machine learning uh, trained, uh, trained models um, that can then uh, interface with the musician and uh, help them. For example, I have a friend who did one uh, where the agent helps you find parameters on a synthesizer. Modern synthesizers have tons, tons of parameters. And so this agent was sort of based on your input, whether you like what he was doing or not, he would help you guide you to find a, a sound that, that you like out of that synthesizer. Um, and there's a lot of stuff going on with um, uh, agents that listen to you, that will listen to a lick or a riff, and then sort of remix it intelligently based on what it's previously learned, um, and then spit out a, uh, a, new, a new version. Um, and that can be used in, in composition, it can be used uh, in soloing. There, there are many so it's many like you have a little companion yeah, exactly. playing with you. You have a buddy that yeah. you're not afraid that, um, you know, that's quite 
people say about AI pretty much in any sector, uh, not just in music, that you know, it's, going to, it's going to replace humans, and that's the end of it, and prediction is going to be uh, driven by machines tomorrow. So you're not afraid of that? No, not at all, because you always need, at any stage of the music creation and production process, from writing a piece to, to mixing and mastering it, um, and at each step now there are machine learning tools that exist, uh, but you always need a, a human to, to make some choices, to have a creative impetus, uh, otherwise you, you, you notice the difference when it's not there. And, and uh, as humans we're too, uh, we're too attracted to really good creative music, um, at least enough of us are, that there's always going to be demand to, to hear that, that human element, uh, that human choice and creative choice at, at, every, yeah. at, every, at every step. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Well, Pierre, thank you very much. And uh, good luck with the rest of your PhD. <laughs> thank you. All right.